Hi, this is Mariah Gallo from The Hollywood Reporter, and I'm here with Lily Mirajnik. Hi. Hi, Lily. You're the star of Happy. Yeah. It's a new sci-fi show. Guys, the show is wild. <laughs> Understatement of the century. <laughs> it is <laughs> wild. Um, let's talk a little bit about the show and the cast. Let's start with the cast. Chris Maloney. Great cast. Patton Oswalt. Yep. Who else? You got Richie a Coster. Uh huh. Uh, Medina Sanghor uh -huh. and Patrick Fischler. Amazing. Um, and you, uh, do you want to just give me a rundown about the show? In the smallest <laughs> nutshell you can get, um, I like to give this and see people's reactions to it. It's about an ex cop turned hitman mm -hmm. who is befriended by a relentlessly perky flying blue unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> Usually garners some sort of Huh? <laughs> um, but it's really, uh, it's Christmas time and uh, kids are going missing. A specific little girl goes missing and her imaginary friend, mm -hmm. Happy, mm -hmm. seeks out Nick Sachs, played by Chris Maloney, um, right. to seek his help in finding her. Right, and this uh, this is the creation of Brian Taylor. Yes, Brian um, Taylor and Grant Morrison, who is the creator of the graphic novel. Right, so we're we're in graphic novel territory. We're in crank territory. Very <laughs> much so in crank territory. <laughs> Do you uh, did you see Crank before you signed on to this? I saw Crank when it first came out, uh -huh. and it was one of those like, yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm an adrenaline junkie. I love action films. I just that go, 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 mm -hmm. it's just something that I feed off of. Uh -huh. So when I first met Brian, it was very, you're always interested to see the creative mind behind something that you love and what is that brain? How does that person function? Do they function on that really high adrenaline level or sometimes it's complete opposite and they're just super laid back? And mm -hmm. he was one of those guys who was really laid back. He's hugely passionate. Uh -huh. about the things he loves, and he gets really into it, and it gets really um, built up when he talks about it, but he's mm -hmm. just such a laid-back guy, and it's just like, how do you, how does this come out of you? <laughs> but it's incredible. He's a special guy. Yeah, so, um, so okay, w let's start with Happy, voiced by Patton Oswalt. Yes. Patton Oswalt of Ratatouille. Um, Happy is, like, a character that, I mean, okay, so I was going to say that your character might have been one of the more sympathetic characters, even though your hands are not clean. <laughs> My hands are not clean. <laughs> no, nobody's hands are Nobody's really hands are clean. clean here. Maybe happy? I don't know. He's an innocent. <laughs> you know, he's the imaginary friend of a, of a, little, of girl. a little girl. Yeah. A ten-year-old girl. So yeah. it, there's an innocence and there. And she's innocent. Mm -hmm. And guys, if you... <laughs> don't have a stomach for, like, this is an incredibly stressful show. It is, and it only gets more stressful. <laughs> it definitely only gets more stressful. The kidnapping scene is, like, one of the most terrifying things I've ever seen. Yeah, the, um, <laughs> our very bad Santa Claus is <laughs> quite terrifying, and he, um, Joe Reitman, who plays Santa, mm -hmm. he's, He's such a sweet guy, oh, and he puts this whole thing on, and you're just like, God, you're terrifying. I can't look at you. And, My childhood is ruined. Um, there's a lot of creepy, bad, messy people in our world, yeah. um, but there yeah. is the innocence. There's the innocence of Haley, the little girl, and the innocence of Happy, and it's, it's a nice... Um, it's a nice balance kind of it brings I mean it immediately brings that fantastical element into this real world that we live in um Grant once said his original inspiration mm -hmm. for the character of Nick Sachs that Chris plays was Simon Cowell really yes. <laughs> that's interesting he likes to tell his story and it's really um it's that kind of just harsh can be negative um but there are things that bring out this um, positivity. Yeah. That it still exists in there somewhere. Right. And happy kind of becomes the yang to his yin or the yin to his yang, whatever you want to say it. But, um, and so they become such a perfect partnership for each other. Right, right. I can see that. Yeah, I love, um, I mean, I love Chris. He's one of the ultimate comedic actors he's and it's really fun to see him in an funny. action role it is and it's he's 
he's got a lot of lot of humor in it, and he his timing is so impeccable that it just he and Patton together um, the relationship that they've created and their comic timing off mm -hmm. of each other is just it's perfect and it's there and it adds a little bit of lightness to this pretty heavy world mm -hmm. and heavy circumstances. Yeah, have you seen, because Patton plays a CGI character, have you had any interactions with him or is it one of those things where you're gonna meet him at the premiere? Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, he interacts with Chris, cause mm -hmm. really Happy is imaginary and so the only people who can see Happy are Haley mm -hmm. and Nick. And yeah. so, there's not even necessarily a need, you know, it kind of turns him into a real thing for us who right. he's not real to. Um, so they don't have like a tennis ball when Happy's in no. the room? No, <laughs> funny enough, <laughs> it actually, they, I mean they have specific little, um, there's a silver ball, a white ball, a color card, and a little stuffed animal, a blue stuffed animal, uh -huh. but it's purely for color reference and lighting okay. reference for the visual effects. So when Chris is acting with Happy, the, you, <laughs> it's always was fun watching the monitors because you'd get one shot of Chris and then just empty frame. <laughs> but it's not a fully empty frame, and, and watching Chris work on this has actually been pretty special because he's mm -hmm. just creating something. Out of yeah. thin air, he's our script supervisor Tony. He was phenomenal, and he voiced Happy on set. Um, but it was really Chris who manifested this relationship, essentially, yeah. <clears throat> essentially out of thin air. Yeah, and he actually, in the past, has had to act uh, opposite of a can of vegetables <laughs> yes. in What Hot American Summer. So. He he's <laughs> pretty good and seasoned. With Maybe that's the... how he got the job. <laughs> Yeah, he, but he has fun with it because he gets to create, and it's um, it's kind of magical to watch. It was yeah. really incredible seeing the very, very first scene we shot of the first episode was the scene in the hospital with um, Sax, myself, and Happy. And I clearly don't see Happy, but um, watching him create this world and my character Mary not knowing what is really going on with him um, and just being there for it and then cut to months later seeing the finished product and seeing this little horse flying around the room mm -hmm. having a conversation with him it was just like as if he was there the whole time. Yeah. You forget that at a certain point he wasn't actually there. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about your character a little bit. Um, so you play a cop who's kind of messed up with the mob, and so are we going to get to see some like some really cool action sequences out of you? There are some really cool action sequences. Um, Mary gets a little beaten up along this oh, journey. Boy. Um, <laughs> That's going to be an understatement, I'm sure. It's yeah, I, I definitely um, didn't get the brunt of it. That was Chris's job. Uh, <laughs> but, and all the real bad guys. But, um, you know, she's really, really, she's complicated. She's got a history. It's a really dirty world that mm -hmm. they live in. And like all humans, we're all complicated. We all have different feelings about different things and where does our moral compass lie and where do we draw our own lines? Mm -hmm. And so she kind of takes a journey through finding where her lines are and where her loyalties lie and the reasons behind the things she does. Because I think that in general, a lot of people, you know, you can say out loud, no, I wouldn't do X, Y, or Z, but if it means, um, saving your best friend or protecting somebody that you care about, how far do you go? Mm -hmm. And so it really, that's kind of the world in which she lives. And there's a lot of past relationships that get brought up and start to inform the decisions that she makes. And mm -hmm. it's um, it's a really interesting journey that she takes through the season. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but she definitely, she's, it's funny because she's cop, but you don't really get a lot of the cop. Yeah. She's on her own a lot, dealing with, Mm -hmm. the um, events that have started to take motion. And um, so she's a cop at heart, but she's dealing with what's happening in this world. Right. And 
you get a little bit of her past. There's mm-hmm. some flashbacks that we visit who Mary was maybe in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it sets down a path. That You're it's stressing just kind of, me out I don't, right now. I don't know. It's I'm so like, oh hard God, to explain. what's gonna happen? No, everybody <laughs> kind of like has their own tale of redemption. Yeah. You know? Well, that's that's cool. It's really you know, Sax has, has his own redemption story. Mary has hers. There's mm-hmm. a bit of coming of age, not just for an innocent like Happy and Haley, but for someone like Mary who mm-hmm. is experiencing these new things and figuring out where her lines are crossed and when things change and circumstances change, how do your how does your moral compass change with it? Right. Yeah. And this is like a world where I mean this is a world where nothing is really functioning. Like you could be a police officer but there's it's you're not serving and protecting. You're like on your own agenda. <laughs> yes. Like everybody's kind of out from themselves in this world. It's just yes. it is graphic novel world. It is very much graphic <laughs> novel world, but it's great because it is it's still based in reality. You know, right. we're not you know, we're not Sin City in that noir, like, kind right. of, you know, intense world. Right, we, it's somewhere in between. We're in Brooklyn. We're in the back alleys <laughs> of Brooklyn. Um, I heard it described once as Pulp Fiction meets A Christmas Carol. Oh, And I went, I like that's that. pretty accurate. I like that like, a lot. If you can kind of summon up that that visual, mm-hmm. that's really kind of what it is. Mm. What, do you, what do you think about using using Brooklyn, the back streets of Brooklyn, as a location for this kind of thing. There seems to be a time-honored tradition of New York City being used as, like, the ultimate corrupt <laughs> place. <laughs> place. Which is so funny because it's changed so much over the years, oh but it still, like, really captures the imagination with filmmakers. Yeah, it's it's just, it it is a character in and of itself. In our world, it's it's dirty, and there's sides to the city that you don't necessarily see to the naked eye, um, but I mean, other things. It can be this bright and shiny character, and so it mm-hmm. it really helps inform our world in this. Because um, no matter how clean it gets, it's still New York. Yeah, you know, it, there's still a lot of you can't get rid of all the rats. Exactly, <laughs> perfect way to put it. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> um, so. Uh, Oh, the other thing that I wanted to ask you was about your character's inspiration. Like, did you were you inspired by any other performances in the past? Because this is kind of a time honored tradition of the dirty cop, but usually played by a man. So, yeah. did you have any inspiration? Well, a lot of my inspiration. I mean, almost everything that I've ever seen since I was a kid has informed me in one way or another. Mm-hmm. Um, just as an actor in general. Um, so I think it's kind of like I've been a sponge my whole life and I absorb certain things. Some things, you know, fall out by the wayside and some just they start to live. And um, this more came from, I mean, obviously I'm not a corrupt cop, but she's very like me mm-hmm. just in her complications because she's, um, she's not window dressing. Mm-hmm. She's a real girl. Um, she's got real issues in her own life and just trying to keep her head above water and do what she thinks is right. And so most of my inspiration really came, I had a conversation with Grant about Mary's backstory because even though you get this short four four chapter graphic novel, Mm -hmm. he has a whole world in his head. He's created these characters. Um, So between having a conversation with him about what his Uh, original thoughts on what Mary's backstory was and then having a conversation with Brian and our showrunner Patrick McManus um, in terms of the world that and they're very collaborative um, so they just sharing what they came to and it really she existed already there wasn't you didn't have to kind of do that thing where you create your own backstory and your own depth because it's not there on the page. Uh It was very much there on the page and it had been thought about and it had been thought through and I don't find her really to be as much of a corrupt cop as just a woman with some shit to deal with. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) She just so happens to be a cop Mm -hmm. and the circumstances of her past led her to where she is today. Well, I have a few questions for you. Um, the first one would be, do you, have you ever gotten into a, book, a comic book or a graphic novel? Has there 
been any in the past, or are you not a graphic novel person? It is the, probably the one place in terms of hobbies and life and stuff that I never really tapped into. When I was a kid, I was very into the Archie comics. I loved oh, yeah. Archie <laughs> comics as a kid. Um, but that was really kind of, so this right. has been a really nice new adventure. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, because I know from be, like being on Patton's Twitter feed that he's like intensely into comic books and has been his whole life. Yeah. And I honestly don't know how you can keep up with it. Like, There's so how do much. they do it? And especially I mean, nowadays. he's also a successful actor and comedian. <laughs> but it's that kind of thing where it's like when you have your hobbies, you find the time for it. I guess know? so. Um, mine just never were comics. <laughs> yeah. I have friends who are very into comics, and they start talking about, you know. Yeah. Issues? Issues, thank yeah. you. Issue 622 of Superman from the... And I'm like, how do you even pull that? But then yeah. I realized, like... I pull out sports stats like that. You know what I right. mean? It's all just right. your thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, okay, I have a couple of questions for you. It's called First Best, Last Worst. It's something we do with actors. Okay. And um, this is this is an interesting question lead because it, this is the same one that I did for Brooklyn Prince, who's seven years old, who was at the Florida Project. <laughs> so it should be interesting. All right, I'll take it. <laughs> um, first movie you saw that made you want to be an actress? Gigi. Oh, nice. Musical, 1957, Leslie Caron. It was, wow. I, it's been my favorite movie since I was like four. Um, and I definitely used to do the musical numbers around my living room. Um, but I actually really, it made me want to live in that type of world and that started the ball rolling into I... I like this, and I like this, and I like this, and look, you're an actor, you kind of get to put your hands in all of it a little bit. Yeah. So. Cool. Very well-rounded. Uh, best costume you've had to wear for a job? Best costume? Yeah. Oh, God, I feel like I have, my mom's a costume designer, so oh, it's wow. it's a very important world to me. Yeah. Um, and so... There's a lot, I would say, this really might be it purely because of the simplicity. There were no heels, and there was no push-up bra. <laughs> it, was, it was like jeans and a turtleneck and a coat, and it's awesome. Um, so I love that, yeah. but I might say my absolute favorite may have been for Public Morals. It was a Ed Burns show that took place in the 60s. And so oh, we got wow. a lot of that fun, and she was very sassy Italian girl, so I had big hair and a lot of makeup and these tight sweaters and pencil skirts, and it's just something that's totally out of the box for me. That's nice. Um, last time you made a mistake, and how did you fix it? Could have been probably at work. It just completely, like, in time crunch. Uh-huh. Completely forgetting my lines. Uh. Just going complete brain fart, going, ah, what do I even say? We're on the clock. Uh, 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 um, that one. Just stop, breathe, and go on. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you have to do that, right? I mean, if you focus on the mistakes, it just gets, <laughs> it just worse, gets and worse, worse and worse. And you just start digging yourself a hole. <laughs> uh, worst kind of food to eat? What's your least favorite food? There's a tie. Coconut, avocado, and tomato. Oh. I'm a like consistency like a, person. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I don't, it would be. It's tomatoes, something about I'll the eat, texture. I'll eat things made of tomato, mm -hmm. but I don't like actual tomatoes. Avocado? Mm -hmm. Coconut, <laughs> definitely. Man, you're World in the tomato. wrong city for that I stuff. know. <laughs> First house we lived in in California, we had avocado trees, and my mom was like, guacamole. I was like, keep it. <laughs> All you. Well, I don't agree with your food choices, but I do Is think you're for amazing you. and happy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's right. Lily, it's so nice to meet you, and, you and um, we will see you on uh, Sci-Fi for Happy. Bye.